In Ecclesiastes 12, 13, when Solomon, the preacher, was rounding up, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment. This is the old duty of man. There is a reason why we live. If you study the book of Acts, before we got to Acts chapter 9, in Acts chapter 1, that was when, the Bible says, Acts 1 verse 1, the psalm and churches, O Theophilus, have I written unto you of all that Jesus began to both do and teach. Theophilus was not, as it were, an individual. It was a group. The word Theos means love. The, the word Theos rather means God. The word Philios means love. That is why you get the different kinds of love. You get the agape love. You get the filial love. So the word Theos means God. The word Philios means love. The word Theos. That's why you get theology, which means the study of God. So when the Bible said now the sermon tratas, oh, the former tratas, oh, Theophilus, he was saying the former tratas, oh, lovers of God. So the book of Acts was written to the lovers of God. So in Acts chapter 1, they needed to correct the number of the apostles because they were expecting the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost likes to move where there is order. Order is the mother of progress. In Genesis 22 verse 9, he said, and he laid it in order. In 1 Kings 18, 33, he says, he set it in order. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40, let everything be done decently and in order. In Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1, he said, put your house in order, for thou shalt surely die. In 2 Samuel chapter 17, verse 23, he said, and Ahithophel went and put his household in order and hanged himself. And died and was buried in Psalm 119 verse 133 he said order my steps O God in your word order my steps in your word so God wants order they had to balance the number and in chapter 2 the Bible said the Holy Ghost came in chapter 3 they saw a man that was by the gate of beautiful and this man needed attention they ministered to him and because of that in chapter 4 they were arrested after they were released in the last chapter of chapter 4 in chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira, God needed to release fear on the church because anywhere there is power, people easily get familiar with the anointing. Any church or place of power, people easily get familiar. So the Bible said they lied to Peter. And Peter said, you have not lied to me, you have lied to the Holy Ghost. If today somebody lies to me and I tell the person you have lied to the Holy Ghost, people will ask, are you the Holy Ghost? But you are representing the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says they died. Because of that, there was so much disorderliness. In Acts chapter 6, they decided to get deacons. And the deacons were to minister to the widows. Because widows were coming and many of them were not attended to. And one of the deacons who was appointed in Acts chapter 6, in Acts chapter 7, he left the office of being a deacon and made himself an evangelist. He began to minister to people and they stoned him. His name was Stephen. In Acts chapter 8, one of the uh, 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 men who were deacons, the anointing of the evangelist came upon him on its own. His name was Philip and he went to Azotus and began to minister. And in that, last, in that last part of chapter 8, you discover there was a man called Saul. He was the one that supervised the killing of Stephen. And in Acts chapter 9, if you read especially verse 2, the Bible says he was going out to get documents. There is something about the life of Apostle Paul. Even as an unbeliever, he believed in legality. Let me go and get documents so that when I persecute the church, I will do it on legal ground. But he was a wicked man. And don't forget what the Bible says in Isaiah 57, 21. There is no peace for the wicked, yet my God. There is no peace to the wicked. The Bible says in Isaiah 48, 22, there is no peace for the wicked. In Psalm chapter 7, verse 11, he said, God loved the righteous, but God judged the righteous, but is angry with the wicked every day. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 8, the latter part, he said, they that go therein shall not know peace. He came against the church and God came against him. He came to fight the church and God came after him. 
And when God came after him, he had to cry out. The Bible says on his way to Damascus, a light arrested him. On his way to Damascus, a light arrested him. There were a group of people around him, but he alone saw that light. And he cried out. And he asked two questions which we are going to consider today, which to me is the essence of life. If you check your conscience and live with your conscience, you will know there is nothing valuable in life outside of this. This is the essence of life. Conscience is important. Acts chapter 24 verse 16. He said that you might have a conscience that is void of offense towards God and man. Conscience is important. In 2 Timothy 1.12, it says that this is our rejoicing the testimony of our conscience. Second, sorry, Second Corinthians 1.12 the, the testimony of our conscience. In Romans 9.1, Paul was speaking, he said, I lie not, my conscience bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. And in Romans chapter 13, I think verse 5, when God was talking to us, he was admonishing us, and he said to us that you must need be subject, not for rot only, but for conscience's sake. So God wants us to walk with our conscience. On his way to Damascus, Paul was arrested. And when he was arrested, the power of God crippled him. No matter the speed of the wicked, God knows how to stop them. He was on the horse. No matter the speed of the wicked, God knows how to stop them. And today, he will stop them. I don't like your amen at all. He will stop them. He will stop them. Jehovah will stop them. Elohim will stop them. El Shaddai will stop them. He will stop them and he will give you peace. God, oh, I'm, I'm prophesying on someone. God will stop them and give you peace. God will stop them and give you peace. Jehovah will stop them and give you peace. Elohim will stop them and give you peace. There's a peace that God gives to a man when God has swallowed up all his enemies around about him. God did that for you know in the time of Solomon in 1st Kings 4 24 the Bible said God gave Solomon peace round about peace round about on every side in John 14 27 Jesus said my peace I live with you my peace I give unto you not as the word give it give that unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid in John 16 33 I like what Jesus said Jesus said in John 16 33 he said these things have I spoken that in me you shall have peace he said but on the world you shall have tribulation he said be not afraid but be of good cheer for I have overcome somebody say I receive peace oh God in Isaiah 9 verse 6 he is called the prince of peace in Psalm 122 verse 7 he said peace within thy walls prosperity within thy palaces in Psalm 128 if you read verse 6 the word of the Lord says you shall see your children's children hey you are not saying amen you shall see your children's children and peace upon Israel God wants you to enjoy uncommon peace in Isaiah chapter 32 verse 17 he said the effect the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever God wants you to enjoy common peace peace that passes all understanding so as Paul was on his way to get documents so that anytime he persecutes the church he will be doing it legally the God that is bigger than any legal standing the one that initiated law himself is sure and i like what he said he said who are thou lord that's the essence of life who are thou lord the first essence of life is desire to know god who are thou? You, now we see why paul was outstanding and missed all the disciples from the beginning the from the footing he was routing to know god 
many of us have no hunger at all when nothing drives you you can't drive anything we have no hunger at all he was hungry so the first essence of life is knowledge of god hunger to know god desire to know god passion to know god knowledge of god that you are hungry you are pursuing god with such a crazy temperature because you want to know him somebody say i want to know you lord i can you say i want to know you lord see i want to know you lord see i want to know you lord i am hungry for you i'm hungry for you paul told his disciples paul was talking to the roman church in romans 11 25 romans 11 25 he said i would not have you be ignorant i would not have you be ignorant brethren first corinthians 12 verse 1 first corinthians 10 1 second corinthians 1 8 i will not have you be ignorant but the truth is if you want to be ignorant it's a choice if you choose to be ignorant you are free paul was speaking first corinthians 14 verse 8 he said let him that be ignorant be ignorant if you want to be ignorant be ignorant but if you are pursuing knowledge first timothy chapter 2 verse 4 he said i wish that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of god as soon as you are born again the next thing you begin to pursue is knowledge of god isaiah chapter 33 verse 6 says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times the strength of thy salvation for the fear of the lord is his treasure when you have knowledge you are wise and you are stable nothing shakes you you are not move about you are stable that's why i say wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times when others are tossed to and fro you are stable in job 36 26 he said god is great we know him not but the number of his years cannot be searched out in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 the axe knows his owner the horse knows his master but my people have not known me in other words god was saying even animals know their owner there is a way you relate with a dog and the dog sees you and begins to wag his tail am i correct eh? there are some dogs today that are family members some dogs have become family members when it's time for money devotion they climb the chair and they are clapping you have not seen dogs that are so closed puppies amen puppies puppies knowledge of god knowledge of god in jeremiah 4 verse 22 he said this people is foolish I expected the word of the Lord to say they are foolish. He said, These people, Jeremiah 4, verse 22, for my people is foolish. They have not known me. In John 4, 22, he said, You know not what you worship, but we know what we worship. Isaiah 5, verse 13. Isaiah 5. He said, My people have gone to captivity. See how it starts. My people have gone to captivity for lack of knowledge. Then Nosea 4, 6, he said, My people are destroyed. It starts with them going to captivity and then they get destroyed. Amen. In Psalm 73, verse 22. Psalm 73, verse 22. He said, I was foolish, I was ignorant, so I was like a beast before him. Nothing brings a man to the class of animals like ignorance. When a man lacks the knowledge of God, he is not better than an animal. Paul said, Who are you? lord in proverbs 19 verse 2 he said that a soul should be without knowledge it is not good and proverbs 11 9 say true knowledge shall the just but now he's a just man he's a righteous man in i mean this one is somebody who pray have you not seen people who pray and pray and pray i mean they spend time to pray and they remain in captivity and i, I was like that for many years when the prayer mantle came upon me when my pastor is preaching i go outside to pray i didn't know i was foolish when my pastor is sharing the word i go outside to pray you see me i hold the pillar he's preaching i discovered despite all that i was a victim of all kinds of oppressions scarcity until one day the lord told me he said no 
in as much the passion with which you pursue prayer pursue knowledge pursue knowledge pursue knowledge pursue knowledge pursue knowledge the battle man is in today was a battle of knowledge in genesis 2 verse 9 he said that you that, that you don't eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil so it was a tree of knowledge of good and evil paul cried out who are you lord and i know there's somebody who is crying out to know the lord somebody who is crying out to know the lord in Acts 17 i think verse 23 he said i saw an inscription to the unknown god they were serving a god that they don't know ah who are you lord reveal yourself to me i need the knowledge of god the knowledge of god is the knowledge of the holy spirit if you want to know god it means you are setting your heart to know the holy spirit the first thing you pursue in your quest to know god is to know the holy spirit am i talking to somebody here somebody say i need the holy spirit i can't hear you i can't hear you as you pursue to know you must know the holy spirit you must know the holy spirit you must know the holy spirit the holy spirit is so important as so as so important that the word of god tells us clearly in matthew chapter 12 verse 31 luke 12 verse 10 that every other sin can be forgiven except blasphemy against the holy ghost matthew 12 31 luke 12 10 and i explained to us how many of you are there when i explained to us what the baptist blasphemy of the holy ghost is have i explained that to us so you now understand what the blasphemy against the holy ghost is you must seek to know the holy ghost to know the holy spirit and if you want to know the holy spirit you go by his words it's called holy spirit you must be holy and be spiritual to know the holy spirit you must pursue holiness and pursue spirituality in romans chapter 8 verse 9 he said he that has not the spirit of god is not of him you must pursue the holy spirit you must pursue the holy spirit you must pursue the holy spirit and you must pursue him in holiness hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 follow peace with all men and for holiness without which no man shall see the lord the day you make up your mind to start living holy that day you have made up your mind to know the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a human being but it's a person the holy spirit represents jesus fully that's why he said in john 16 verse 7 it's expedient for you that i go away if i do not go the comforter will not come but if i depart i will send him to you the holy spirit is called paracletos paracletos means one called alongside to help one that is that has the same embodiment endowment and empowerment with jesus himself so if you don't know the holy spirit you don't know god many of us have no personal relationship with this holy spirit the holy spirit the holy spirit is the active force of god god the father creates god the son declares and the spirit manifests god the father creates the son declares the spirit manifests when the lord said let there be light it was the spirit that brought it to be the bible says in romans 8 verse 11 if that spirit that raised up jesus from the dead dwells in you it shall quicken your mortal bodies can i get the message translation the message translation of romans 8 11. he said it stands to reason doesn't it that if the alive and present god who raised jesus from the dead moves into your life he will do the same thing in you that he did in jesus bringing you alive to himself when god lives and breathes in you and as he does as surely as he did in jesus you are delivered from dead life with his spirit in you with the spirit living in you your body will be alive as christ can we get the amplified if the spirit of human raised jesus dwells in you he who raised jesus christ
from the dead will also restore life to your mortal body short live perishable bodies through his spirit who dwells in you do you have the new living translation any other translation or these are just the two you have good news translation if the spirit of god who raised jesus from the dead lives in you then you who raised jesus from the dead we also give life to your mortal bodies by the presence of his spirit in you there's something i'm looking for amen it's not here there's something i was looking for hallelujah is there another version there's a version that says it will vitalize amen it will what vitalize energize empower i need the holy spirit i need to know you spirit of god wherever you are seated lift your hands and say holy spirit i need you to do this from a heart of sincerity a heart of honesty a heart of focus without distraction say holy spirit, holy spirit. reveal yourself to me in my pursuit of knowledge of god reveal yourself to me sweet spirit of my father spirit of the living god reveal yourself to me spirit of the living god empower me to know you empower me to relate with you empower me to fellowship with you i need you holy spirit in my life i need you holy spirit in my walk with god amen you need to know the holy spirit it's important that we know the holy spirit in your knowledge of god the first thing you must set out to know is the holy spirit when paul said who are you lord paul was saying i want to know you and the first thing he knew was the holy spirit the second thing you get to know the knowledge of god is the knowledge of his word god and his word are inseparable inseparable as a matter of fact in psalm 138 verse 2 god said i've exalted my word above my name isaiah 40 verse 8 said the grass may wither the flower may fade but the word of our god abides forever you cannot know god without knowing his word never allow your prayer life to be louder than your word life or else you will suffer spiritual kwashoko. When your prayer life is louder than your word life, it is tantamount to spiritual imbalanced diet. In Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. You need it. Colossians 3:16. He said, Let the word of God dwell richly in you. When the word of God dwells richly in you, you are rich in this world. So you've got to know the word. Hebrews 4 verse 12. He said the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing and sunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God is God's surgical tool. God's surgical implement and equipment. When God wants to carry out a surgery in a man's spiritual life, even physical life, God goes through his word. The Bible says in Acts 19 verse 20, so grew mightily the word of God and prevailed. Anything the word of God cannot give you, you cannot get it. In Acts chapter 20 verse 32, he said, I commend you to God and the word of his grace that is able to build you and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Anything the word of God cannot give you, you cannot get. Pursue the word. Pursue the word. Be addicted to the word. Pursue the word. Be hungry for the word. There is power in that word that God gives. It's important. The Bible says in John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 14. He said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him there was not anything made that was made in him was light and the life was the light of men and the light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there was a man sent from God whose name was John 
he said he came to bear witness of the light that through him men might believe he said he was not the light he came to bear witness of the light and verse 9 said this is the true light that lighteneth every man that cometh into this world he was in this world he created the world he said but the world didn't know him he came to his own and his own received him not but as many as received him to them gave him power to become the sons of god even to them that believed in his name he said not of the will of the flesh nor the will of man but of the will of god and the bible said the world was made flesh and dwelt among men and we beheld the glory of the begotten of the father full of grace and of truth as you receive god's word you receive god as you receive god's word you receive god's fullness the fullness of god is communicated by the efficacy of his word in psalm 119 verse 89 psalm 119 verse 89 forever O lord thy word is settled in heaven until you settle with what is settled you can never be settled until you settle down with what is settled you cannot be settled in psalm 119 verse 162 it says i rejoice at thy word as one that has found great spoil spoils are dividends of battle of warfare when you discover the world you discover dividends so as you pursue knowing god you must know the holy spirit you must know the word why do i need to know the word of god the word of god is a creator the word of god is a creator in john and genesis chapter 1 in verse 6 he said, and god said verse 9 god said verse 11 god said verse 14 god said verse 19 god said verse 21 god said the bible says in verse 26 god said verse 29 god said and verse 31 god saw everything god said god saw so the word of god is a creator if you want to create a prosperous a prosperous life and you want to create a life of peace a life of wholeness then you must create it by the word of god the word of god is a creator somebody say the word of god is a creator the word of god is your growth your growth how do you know you are growing when the word of god in you is growing when you are not growing in the world you are not growing in god you must grow in the world to grow in god the abundance of god's word in your spirit determines the abundance of prosperity you communicate the bible says in first peter chapter 2 verse 2 as newborn babes desire the sincere meek of the word of god that you may grow thereby am i speaking here you are not growing in galatians chapter 4 verse 1 in galatians chapter 4 verse 1 he said the hair so long as a child does not differ from a servant although he be lord of all and is kept under teachers and tutors until the time appointed of the father when you desire to grow the very day you start loving the world you start loving growth there are many 50 year old believers who are 50 year old babies how many of you know that age is number eh? age is number maturity is a thing of the heart maturity is a function of exposure sometimes street sense is stronger than school sense street sense sometimes is stronger than school sense there are people who started fending for themselves at an early age 14 15 no parents before they get to 30 they are so matured and there are some people who even at 45 they are still say calling their mother mom at 45 mom or mommy 45 amen are you following me lift your right and say father give me appetite Yo, you're not doing it to say father in fact stand up stand up stand up stand up you know there are many of you that can carry your phone you can chat for two hours three hours but to carry bible for 30 minutes you sleep you sleep you know nothing about the bible the pastor saw me at the airport he said to me he said be my mentor i said that's nice where do you worship he said no i don't worship anywhere i have my own church uh -uh. 
Even if you have your own church, don't you worship there? I say, okay, get out your Bible, open to Zebudiah chapter 5. And he opened the Bible. I was looking for it. I said, did you know what I said? He said, yes, Zebudiah. I read it this morning. I said, you read Zebudiah this morning? You read Zebudiah this morning? Uh -uh. And you discover people who have no knowledge of God's word. I, I was just imagining, who will this one be pastoring? Give me appetite for your word. This ministry is a word ministry. Are you following me? I see many of you young boys and young girls. I just know you won't go far if you continue like this. Everything about you is prayer. I pray. Oh. Hey, I pray. You don't have an idea. I pray. I pray. Very well. Many think everything is prayer. Prayer, 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 prayer. Once my pastor starts preaching then, I will leave church. I'll go near the restroom. After I do all of that, things were not changing. And God said, you are empty. It's like somebody who keeps clearing, clearing. You keep, you go to the farm. You clear, 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 clear. You go, you go, go away. The next day you come again. You clear, clear, clear. That's what prayer does. But the word of God plants the seed. The seed is the word of God. Prayer keeps clearing all the others, but the word plants the seed. Give me appetite! Anything you cannot find in the world, you cannot find in this world. Am I talking to somebody here? There was a period because of constant praying at night I was doing, sleep was becoming a problem. I couldn't sleep. Throughout the day, my eyes, is, my eyes are shining. I finished praying the night, study at night, I can't sleep. Initially, I was okay, but later I was getting to one week, two. I said, what is going on? I closed my eyes, under 30 minutes, it's open. I can't sleep. So I knew this one was no more spirituality, this attack. Why can't I sleep? And I located where is, the Bible says, he giveth his beloved sleep. I let me down to sleep, the Lord awakened me. I, I put that scripture in my spirit, sleep came. As you locate it in the world, you locate it in this world. Why would you carry your Bible? Two verses, three verses, you have become a Muslim. Two or three verses, you have become a Muslim. Two, three verses. On the spot, that's how you are going. But when it comes to chatting, you can't. There is something fighting your knowledge of God. There are many of you looking at me now. You do not like to study the Bible. All the scriptures you know are the ones you heard from me. You have never opened the Bible on your own. This thing, this man of God is saying, turn to, turn to, turn to. Let me turn on my own. And open the book, thank you. And open it. Am I communicating? Give me appetite. Kashata. Hey! Kobarakataya. Give me hunger. Hunger! Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah? You see this is my Bible? I love it. After my wife and my children, it's my Bible. After I see them, I talk to them, the next thing is Bible. This particular one. Ah, it don't tear. I said, Lotepam. Where's the camera? Come, come. Bring camera, come close. Can I, can't I buy another one? Can't I buy another one? But I am too addicted. Look at the side. Are you seeing that? Okay, wait. Wait. Oh. Open the side. See what I've written. See. Are you seeing Byro? Next chapter. On the on the cover, yeah. Oh yeah, see inside. See another cello tape. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Can't I buy another one? 
But you know they say when you get so addicted to something, you can't let it go. I have so many new Bibles, so many. I can't count the Bibles I have. More than 30 new ones. They say, Papa, some of my, my sons, they will look at my Bible, they won't talk. The next will buy a brand new one. I said, look at this one. Is it Bible? I can buy one million Bibles. I said, but this one, that one is Bible. This one is scripture. <laughs> <laughs> a general overseer will not do what I just did to you now. I'm being transparent and honest. People won't, I'm not stupid. I'm being sincere to show you. This is my life. I'm, I'm, by doing this, I'm communicating the same hunger. This thing that you have not opening, that is where your destiny is. This thing you are not reading, that is where your future is. This thing you are not studying, that is what will guarantee you security for the rest of your life. Give me appetite for your word. That is why the devil doesn't make you... The things of God that we place little or no value or premium on, that's where the success lies. Oh God, I want to know you. Give me appetite for your word. Say, my father, my father. Oh, God. Shout it loud and clear. My father, my father. I want to know you. I want, I want to know you. Give me appetite for your word. Give me appetite for your Open your mouth and turn it to prayer. <laughs>
When you desire to know God, you have made up your mind, you have desired to know the Holy Spirit, you have desired to know His Word, and you have desired now to know His power. I like to talk about it. Somebody shout power. Take your seat. Paul said in Philippians 3, verse 10, that I may know Him. When you set out to know God, hey, who shaga bali etada yasaga. In this world of wickedness, power is the antidote. Power is your antidote. Listen to me. How many of you know somebody in those days when people, when, when people are eating, they tell them not to stand up from their food because before they come back, somebody can... Uh, do you know somebody can poison a food and eat it with you? He will, he will have what they call the antidote. He can poison the food and eat the food with you and nothing will happen to him. Why? Because he has the antidote that can arrest that poison. As he takes it, as he takes it immediately, the poison is repelled. Antidote. The church is a powerful church. But the problem is that we do not understand by the revelation of the world how much power we possess. The church, church is the only group that can kill a person. There will be no trace, no fingerprint. They will kill you in prayer. No fingerprint, no trace, so no police arrest. They pronounce a word and you are gone. Jesus said in Matthew 22, 29, Mark 12, 24, you do err not knowing the scriptures or the power of God, Mark 12, 24, Matthew 22, 29. The, key, the scriptures are the power of God. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, all power in heaven and on earth. When you make up your mind to know God, get ready for power. You become a container, a carrier of power. Your life is loaded with power. When you decide to know God, Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4, where the word of a king is, there is power, and no one can say to him, what doest thou? The power of God, you need that power in your life. You need that power in your life. A Christian without knowledge is a powerless Christian. You need that power in your life. Power to rule. Power to be in charge. Power to, to operate as a God on earth. In Psalm 82, from verse 5 to verse 7, he said, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, for the foundation of the earth is out of course. For I have said, Ye are gods, and ye all are sons of the Most High. He said, But they shall die like men, and shall fall like one of the princes. In John chapter 10, verse 35, If he called them God, unto whom the word of God came, for the scriptures cannot be broken. If only you know, as you are pursuing to know God, power is being released. Power. Power. You know the Holy Spirit power comes. Acts 1 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Power. 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 When power comes on an ordinary man, it becomes extraordinary. Look at James Th Thomas. Thomas, that was a man who wanted to see things before he believed, a doubter. Later on in his life, when he went to India and as a missionary, he was flowing in power. One time, people met him as a missionary and said to him, Prove to us your God is powerful. 
and he put his hand in water and he threw the water into the air the water splashed and he said stay there and the water was suspended in the air that was a man who was a doubter but when power came he began to do exploits somebody say power somebody say power somebody say power they are talking about the power of God if you are in this town if you are in this town if you are going towards um, if you come out you are going towards waterboard junction by the, the former Edo line by the side there used to be a tree they cut it down it will grow they cut it it will grow when this ministry began the Lord said to me that's your first assignment I went there anointed the tree and cursed it it dry that place now is a road somebody say power say power the problem you have is that you don't know the efficacy of power that's inside of you that is why you can be oppressed at night they can oppress you they will press you they will press you and it's what you are trying to shout G G G G G G G G G G G G G they oppress you there was a young man who they were pressing every night he used to be a, he used to be a member of cherubi and cellophane sorry um cherubi and, is it cherubi and kerosene so he was there for many years and they were oppressing him one day he came to a service like this and we were talking about the holy ghost power came on him began to blast in other tongues 2 a.m they come to press him that night he went home paya gada paya as he was blasting in tongues he had something on his roof bam he was scared but he intensified the prayer as he was praying praying the team began to roll 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 and he had bam so out of fear he opened his window to check what it was it was his landlady landlady what are you doing here she started confessing i'm the one that i've been coming where did you go last night power entered him if they have been pressing you after now go back and press them press me i press you god know the verse you will press your oppressor oh when this power come they cannot be feeding you in the dream I don't eat in the dream i eat in the physical i should eat what i like eating the dream the first meal on you eating the physical you eat what you like i don't i have never never impossicant eat in the dream who will cook it which market did they buy the ingredient get angry in your spirit so much a power don't say power don't say power Say power, what's power? What's a power? Power that one's for Babalabo. Power is Babalabo. I'm talking of the Holy Ghost. So I say power. Yagabano Shata. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. I know God. I am powerful. I know God. I am powerful. Because I know God. I am powerful. So it's a power in Psalm 110 verse 3 said thy people shall be willing in the day in Psalm 66 verse 3 I like what he says through the greatness of thy power shall the enemy submit themselves unto thee in Psalm 62 verse 11 once God has spoken twice that what is power what is wrong with you Say power. I didn't say say power. Not power. Not power. That one is that one belongs to Malam. Power is for Malam. Power is for Abalist. Power is for God. Hey! When you know God, you know power. Somebody say, I am powerful nothing can stop me take your seat i don't want to ever you I, I feel very uncomfortable that people come to me and they're pushing me they're pushing me. don't you pursue people must they be pursuing you all the time can't you pursue somebody why will a member walk to me say papa I had a dream say what well, say i pursue them i say correct now you come to me say they're pursuing you they're always pursuing you if i ever hear that they pursue you again you will go back to that dream and go and pursue them 
Why would they pursue you? Pursue them. Am I talking to somebody here? Because power. He said that Paul said that I may know him and you don't need me to speak to the witch in your house. You are powerful enough. You don't need me to speak to the herbalist that's threatening you. You are powerful enough. You don't need me to come and speak to the strong man. You are powerful enough. You are powerful. There is power inside of you. Somebody say power. What is what is with you and this power? Power this money. What is power? Shall power. Maleko sopra katayadash. Sometimes I begin to think it's like God is an African. No wonder when he was talking about the John John the Baptist parents, he said Mary and Elizabeth from the coast of Abia. They are from Abia State. He was talking about the ingredients for the anointing oil. He said calamus, sweet calamus, caramel, cassia, and onicha. Onicha. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? Power! I'm powerful. Anytime you make up your mind, you say, I want to know this God. Micah chapter 3, verse 8. Micah. Micah 3, 8. But as for me, I'm full of by the spirit of the Lord to and judgment and mind to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Somebody shall power. power. Say, I am powerful. How many of you want to receive that power? You cannot represent God without power. You can never represent this God without power. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? You cannot represent this God without power. We are not assuming it. I said to somebody in government this morning, I said, because God has been showing you people mercy, you are mistaking his mercy for approval. I said, don't forget, there are people that can still call on him and heavens will open. Heavens will open. We are a generation of them that seek his face. Am I communicating here? We are powerful. We have received the power of God. And it's time for you to begin to maximize that power. How can you, how can you wake up? You wake up as a believer. You discover one leg is swollen up. One bone is out of joint. Satan, they are using you to play Ludo. You to play Ludo. You use you to play what? Your ear is crown. And your waist is pick five. You see to play what? Your teeth is pick three. You see you to play what? Use your nose as pick two. They are playing what? With your life because you lack power. Stand on your feet. Say, I need the power. Are you ready? Lift up your right and say in the name of Jesus. I can hear your voice. In the name of Jesus. Listen. This particular prayer, as we take it now, whether you are watching by television or you are here in life, there are people that God will begin to distribute on them packets of power. Some of you, power will fall upon you. I say, power will fall upon you. Amen. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray, let power fall upon me. 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 Open your mouth and turn it to prayer. I'm <laughs> 
your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. Somebody shall power. When you know God, you know the Holy Spirit. When you know God, you know His Word. When you know God, you know His power. Why do we need this power of God? We need the power of God to deal with wickedness. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Paul was talking to the Ephesian church to the eaten that it might be made known of the church, made known to principalities and powers, the manifold wisdom of God by the church. We are in a wicked war to deal with wickedness. In 1 John 5 19, the Bible says, We know we are of God, but the whole world lieth in wickedness. This world is wicked. It's wicked. To deal with wickedness, you need the power of God. Romans chapter 13, verse 4 says, He bears not the sword in vain. Is a minister of God to do good and for, and for that which is evil, be afraid. God's power helps us to deal with wickedness. And in your life, wickedness shall be dealt with. Yeah. I don't like your amen at all. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, this world is not a good place. But you can make your own life good when power is in view. In Exodus 15 verse 6, he says, Thy right hand of God has become glorious in power. Thy right hand has dashed in pieces thy enemies. Thy right hand has dashed in pieces the enemies. In Isaiah 59, 19, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. He said, And stood that they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the going down of the sun. For when the enemy shall come like a flood, in Numbers 10 35, Psalm 68 1, let God arise and let thy enemies. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 7, so shall the Lord cause the enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face, for they shall come in one way and they shall flee. Deuteronomy 20, 28, verse 7, 28, verse 25. They shall flee in seven ways. By the power that is released upon you now, wickedness is over in your life. Yeah. Am I communicating? The power of God terminates wickedness. The power of God releases blessings. Blessings. Deuteronomy 8.18 8, says, that thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that giveth thee power to get wet. God begins to give you creative ideas, creative ideas, strategy that will churn in wealth, creative ideas that will churn in prosperity, creative ideas that will give you abundance, creative ideas that will open doors for you, creative ideas. The plan that Naaman, if you study the book of Esther, the plan that Naaman had against Mordecai, it took him one year. Twelve months to strategize the plan, but it took Esther three days to scatter it. What somebody planned for one year in the physical, somebody deployed the spiritual and shattered it in three days. I don't know how long it's been planned. It's not of God today. We shatter it. I see blessings coming your way. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 19. Ecclesiastes 5 19. He says, God giveth riches and wealth, and giveth every man power to eat thereof and to take his portion. How many of you know that on this earth, with all the wealth available, you have a portion? God giveth us power. To take our portion receive power to take your portion receive God's 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 power number two number two we say what would you have me do the first essence of life is knowing God the second essence of life is knowing your purpose for life 
The wise man said, if a man has no purpose for living, he is not fit to live. What is your assignment for my life? What would you have me do? What is it? I'm asking a question of inquiry. What would you have me to do? What is your plan? What would you have me to do? What is your plan? What? Somebody asks, what? Say, ask, I'm, I'm saying, say this after me, what? Would you have me do? What is your purpose for my life, O oh Lord? You can ask the Lord. Somebody met Jesus in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. He said, good master, what must I do? Matthew 19, 16, Luke 18, 18. I think Mark 10, 17 or 27 or something. He said, what would you have me to do? What must I do that I may inherit eternal life? Good master. You can ask him. In Matthew 27, 22, Pilate asked, what would you have me to do with Jesus called the Christ? What will I do with Jesus called the Christ? In Luke chapter 16, verse 3, a steward said, my master is taking the stewardship from me today. I cannot dig to beg. I am afraid. What will I do? When the Holy Ghost fell upon the, the church, in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, those watching them asked, men and brethren, what shall we do? When John the Baptist was preaching the gospel in Luke chapter 3, verse 12, some publican came and asked him, what do we do? Luke 3, 12. I don't know who is doing that. In verse 14 of Luke chapter 3, some soldiers came again and asked him, what shall we do? You can make inquiries. You have a right to ask. In Acts chapter 16, verse 30, the jailer asked, what must I do to be saved? Acts 16, verse 30. What must I do to be saved? What is your assignment? I don't want to remarole the earth and parabolate the earth. Parabolate and gallivant. What is your assignment? Not my assignment. Your assignment is not your decision, it's your discovery, Mike Mudok said. It's what you discover that's your assignment, not what you decide. Oh God! What would you have me do? He has a plan for you. No matter how nasty life appears. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thought that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give unto you. And expect it In Psalm 139, verse 17. How great, how precious are thy thoughts towards me, O God. Great is the sum of them. God has a plan for you. And I decree by prophetic command. You will not miss it. His specific plan for Jonah was to go to Nineveh. Specific. His plan for Moses was to go back to Egypt. God took Moses, watch this, God took Moses out of Egypt. Right? To take him back to Egypt. To take the children of Israel out of of Egypt to take Egypt out of them before taking them to the promised land the reason God took Moses out of Egypt first was to go and take Egypt out of him that's why it took 40 years God going to take Egyptian character out of him to take him back to Egypt so he can take them out of Egypt and also take Egypt out of them before taking them to the promised land. So if you leave Egypt, Egypt must leave you. Am I communicating here? To so take it as they spent 40 years in the wilderness. Why? God was taking Egyptian characters, Egyptian attitude, Egyptian attributes, took it out of them. What is God's plan for you? What's the assignment for you? Israel, one time, look at someone, said to Samuel, give us a king. First Samuel chapter 8, verse 5. We want a king. We want our own king. And God said to them in verse 7, you have not rejected anyone, but you have rejected me. 
And God now told them what the king would do to them. Verse 11. He said, this king that you are asking for, when he comes, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons, appoint them for himself, for his chariots to be all his horsemen. Some shall run before his horsemen. Verse 12. He will appoint captains over thousands, captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground and reap his harvest and make his instrument of, of war an instrument of his chariots. Verse 3. Verse 13. And take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cook. He will turn your daughters to cook and bakers. Verse 14. He will take your feeds. People we are asking God for what they want. God was telling them what the king would do to them. He will take your feeds, your vineyard, your olive yard, the best of them, and give to his servants. He will take ten, the tenth of your seed and of your vineyard and give to his officers and to his servants. You say you want a king? I'm telling you what the king will do to you. He will take your men servants, your maid servants, and your goodless young men and your asses and put them to his work. He will take tens of your sheep and you shall be his servants. And you shall cry out in that day because of your king, which ye shall have chosen. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Go on. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. They said, Nay, we will have. Did you see what God said will happen to them? They say we don't care. That's what happens when people want their own will. They don't take counsel. This thing you want is not, uh, it doesn't matter. Give it to me. That's what happened to Samson. The parents say, You cannot marry this lady. He said, She pleases me. She has what I like. Give her to me. Samson prepared the wedding, not knowing he was preparing the wedding for his best friend. The best friend who was to be his best man on the wedding took his wife. Many of us are pursuing what we want and we don't care the death just. God said, this is a, uh, give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. A young boy came from Igweben. He said, God said to him, he had an issue with his pastor. So he said, God told him to go and open the church. I said to him, calm down. Give yourself one year. You say, ah, one year? No. No, 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 no. God spoke to him. They have given him money. People have supported him. He's going to Lagos. I spoke and spoke. Young, this boy can pray. Young man. He used to come to minister without blemish. I spoke and spoke and spoke and spoke. After about 10, 20 minutes, he left. But the next day, he sent me a message again. Speak a word, I'm going to Lagos. Entered Lagos. He never got to Lagos. He never got to Lagos. Why? When people want to do their own will, I want to pray a prayer for you. Don't wait, wait. Don't say amen until you listen. No matter how beautiful your plan appears to be, no matter how attractive or enticing your decision is, if God is not behind it, may it fail. It's not behind it. No matter how beautiful it is, how nice it is, how pleasant and attractive. <laughs> Do you know my second trip, my third trip to London? A pastor offered me a church with three cars. As at that period, we were in the bacha. Bacha, you know Bacha, zinc and wood. Church in London, three cars, office, house. Say, go and bring your wife and children. This anointing is too much for Nigeria. I won't deceive you. I go to home as I lay on the bed. I look at the attendance in the church. I look at the three cars. I look at and in London, wife, children. 
I began to think of how I can move two of my kids, we are just two of them then, move my wife, train them abroad. The Lord said, I am not involved. I'm not involved. It looked attractive. Can I shock you? As I lay on that bed and God said, I'm not involved, it died. I did not even carry a phone to call my wife. It died. The desire died. But there are many that would jump at such a thing now. London. 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 UK. Ah! They jump at it. I pray again. Listen before you say amen. No matter how attractive it is, how beautiful, pleasant, enticing it is, any plan that has no God in it for your life, may it fail. Rasa Mahadabaha. How can God tell them all the nonsense that we happen to them? All they will lose. They say, we we'll give it, give us like that. He said, This marriage you are entering now. If you marry, it may not last. Let me marry. I've already told my friends, I've told my people, I've printed card. What will I now say? Let me go ahead. Enter. You, you know. First Corinthians 14 38 it says, He that is ignorant, let him be ignorant. Omeme, remain omeme. Omeme, remain omeme. Omeme, remain omeme. God says, I'm, I have not got you. You want to stay as omeme? Continue in your omemeism. Omeme say, Don't marry. Omeme say, No, I must marry. I must marry. Omeme, look at who you want to marry. Omeme say, No, I must marry. This thing you are entering now with real life. Oswald say no. Oswald, Oswald say no. Oswald say no. Leave me alone. I will let me do what I want to do. The prayer I'm praying is that if God is not involved, may it lose taste to you. May it lose taste. May it irritate you. That money. You know what the Bible says? In Psalm 84 verse 11, the Lord God is a son and a sheep. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will live withhold from them that work uprightly. If God is not giving it to you, it means it's not good for you. If God is not bringing it, it means you don't need it. All good and perfect will come from above, from the Father of light, in whom there's no variable, nor any shadow of turning. So if it is not coming from God to you, it means it's not good and perfect. It's not a good and a perfect gift. Am I communicating? What would you have me to do? Father, may my plan line up with your plan. May my plan correspond with your plan. Can you pray that prayer one minute? Say in the name of Jesus. I can hear you. Say in the name of Jesus. Is this how to pray? Stand up, stand up, stand up. Don't worry, 30 minutes. We have 30, 40 minutes more. Lift your right hand and say, In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My Father, my Father. My Father, my Father. As I begin to pray, as as I begin to pray may my plan, may my plan line, up your plan. line up with your plan. May my plan, may my plan correspond with your plan. Correspond with your plan. Open your mouth and turn into prayer. <laughs> Ya 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 
When you know what God's plan is for your life, that is when you can start praying every other prayer. Who do I meet? How do I go about it? When do I get there? You must first understand the plan. In that plan, you start praying for who do I meet? How do I get there? How do I turn out to be what you want me to be? Because if you have no plan, no divine backed up plan, you spend your life like what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 26. He said, I do not run as one that beateth the air. 1 Corinthians 9 26. Uncertainly as one that beateth the what? The air. Uriah was a mighty man. But he died the death of a chicken. When I look at the story of Uriah, my heart bleeds. Three class of people betrayed Uriah. The first that betrayed him was his wife. Uriah's wife betrayed him. The next that betrayed him was his boss. King David betrayed him. The third that betrayed him were the soldiers. Listen. After David messed up his wife and she was pregnant, David called him to the battle and gave him a letter. In that letter was written to Joab, he said, put Uriah in the hottest part of the battle and retire. The man was carrying his death sentence in his hand and went to give it to the king. The letter that buried him, he carried it with... You will not deliver the message of your own end. What was in the battle? The letter. He said, when he said, take him to the hottest part of the battle and retire. So Uriah soldiers also betrayed him. You see the importance of relationship. If Uriah kept relationship, one of the soldiers would have told him. But he, no, he doesn't talk to anybody. He's too proud. The soldiers, all of a sudden, a recruit. They were carrying you to where generous fights. You thought it was breakthrough. When suddenly you are giving certain access to what you don't deserve, please think twice. It may be a setup. They drag him, say, no, follow us, follow us. And they drag him to the hottest part of the battle. If he had kept relationship, one of them would have said to him, he said, come, when you see all of us going, and we are going back, follow us, go back. Why? Don't ask me. When you see, we take to the other spot and you see us going back. Join us to go back. Why? Why should I go back? Don't ask me. But he had no relationship with anybody. So they were going to the hottest part where the giants were fighting them. They said, follow us, follow us. As soon as he got there, all of them. Not one soul there could have could, no relationship. People that come to church, I don't want to talk to anybody. They don't offend me. They don't offend me. I don't want to do that. They don't offend me. Everybody offends you. It means you have problem. It's not them that have problem. When you, when people keep off, you keep having issues with people. You have problem. You are too proud. That's why everybody's offending you. Who are you that everybody's offending? They must treat you with care. Are you an egg? No relationship. He was, in fact, he had no relationship with his wife. He came back from war. King said, go home. He said, no. 
I am a militant soldier. He slept at the king's door. And his wife was at home. He failed the marriage. So once you have relational problem, it is all around. Go on. At least, he might come from war. Going to say hello to your wife. Is that a crime? No. He's loyal to the king. And died in active service. Am I communicating here? When I read that man's story, I see an exhibition of stupidity. Loyalty that will not make you go and say to check on your wife to know how she's doing. A woman you abandoned for months and went to battle. If you fail in marriage, you have failed. Hallelujah. See what you've done for me. See how you set me free. You are the living God. Oh, is there no one like you? You are my keeper. You are my defender. My love giver. You are the living God. Oh. You are my healer, you are my keeper, my defender, my life giver. You are the living God. Oh, is there no one like you? Equeme, 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 equeme. You are the living God. Oh. you've done for me see how you set me free you are the living god oh.